You may be seated. This morning we have a special guest, Denny O'Brien, and he's going to be sharing his testimony of how God worked a miracle in his life. Denny lives here in Monticello and is a great uncle to Sarah Kaysen. He will be sharing his story with us a little bit later in the service. Our scripture reading comes from Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. My name is Dennis Denny O'Brien. OB, Papa, Papa Great. And I'd like to share a story with you. It's a true story. In December of 2011, I wasn't feeling very well. I went to the VA hospital in Indianapolis, they did some tests. They did a bronchoscopy, came back and said, words nobody wants to hear. You have stage four lung cancer. Quite a shock to the system. You sit there, and those words resonate. Stage four, lung cancer. It's a death sentence, I thought. I was fortunate enough to be under the care of an oncologist from Simon Cancer Center who volunteered one day a week at the Veterans Hospital. His name was Dr. Nasser Hanna. Unbeknownst to me, he's one of the top five lung cancer doctors in the country. I got him, and he, along with my family, my faith, prayers, I got through stage four lung cancer. I'm going to take you on a journey this morning. In January of 2012, they started me on chemotherapy three days a week for six months. I was diagnosed as having lung cancer in my entire right lung, my entire right bronchial tube, and five lymph nodes. I thought, how do we beat this? And Dr. Hannah said, what is your life like? He told me everything he could do for me. And then he said, tell me about yourself. So I explained, at the time, we had two girls who were both married. They each had four children. So I had eight grandkids that we loved dearly. His next question was, what would you like to see happen? I said, I'd like to see the youngest graduate from high school. I only had two graduate at the time. They both graduated in 2009. And he said, how old is your youngest? I said, seven. He goes, um, that's 11 years. 
from now. Yes. He said, well, let's get you upstairs and start treatment and see if we can make that happen. If Dr. Hannah wasn't going to give up on me, I couldn't give up on myself. My wife wasn't going to give up on me. My children, my grandchildren, my family and friends weren't going to give up on me. It's a funny thing when you're faced with a death sentence. You can either choose to give up or you can do what I chose to do. And that's through prayer, faith, family, you move on. I went through six different treatments with six different medications, chemotherapy. The interesting thing was I never got sick on chemotherapy. I had heard all the stories, trust me. Sick to your stomach, not feeling good, not doing this, not doing that. Dr. Hanny explained to me that was gonna happen. I said, what are my options to keep from getting sick? He said, well, you could probably take an anti-nausea pill the day of chemotherapy. I said, okay, what if I took one every day? Would it hurt me? No. So I chose to take one every day. For five years, I took one every day. Never got sick. I don't know why, never did. I went through Gemzar, Docetaxel, those all work very well. Then I got Taxotera, broke out in a rash. That wouldn't go away. Then they put me on Tarceva. That was the worst drug I'd ever experienced, and they took me back off of it within three or four months. From 2012 till the end of 2014, I got transferred to a different oncologist at Simon Cancer Center who also was volunteering at the VA hospital. Her name is Dr. Shadia Jalal. She's one of the top 10 <laughs> oncologists. Call me lucky. I don't think so. I think he's got a plan. Uh, in the end of 2014, Dr. Jalal came to my wife and I, and she said, your cancer has reinvented itself, and chemotherapy is no longer an option for you. I said, what does that mean? She said, it basically means that the cancer cell has changed and it is no longer receptive to chemotherapy drugs. What can I do? She said, unless we can get you on a clinical trial at Simon Cancer Center, there's nothing else we can do for you. Well, I thought, okay, I'll start preparing myself for my next journey. She, though, had another idea. She went to Dr. Hannah. They wrote letters to the administrator 
of the VA hospital, as well as national. Bristol Myers Squibb at the time was doing a clinical trial on a product called OpDevo. If you've seen the ads on TV, it's an immunotherapy drug. They were taking 750 patients for the clinical trial. VA had never, ever approved any veteran for a clinical trial. Why? They didn't want them being used as a guinea pig. I was dying to be <laughs> that guinea pig. In February of 2015, Dr. Jalal called me and she said, good morning patient 751. Without that trial, I wouldn't be here this morning talking to you. I wouldn't be sharing my story of faith and healing. During this entire process, they put me on clinical trial in February 15. I did 26 treatments every other week, anywhere from five hours to three hours. Every other week I sat in a chair and was hooked up to immunotherapy. I went from 185 pounds to 146 pounds before I started immunotherapy. I had panic attacks. My wife left me for three days. She couldn't handle it, and I don't blame her. I couldn't live with myself, and I know she couldn't live with me. I became a royal pain in the you know what. But through it all, he was there. You ever have a God moment? Let me tell you about one. In 2018, I asked Brenda if we could do a bucket list trip that I've been wanting to do forever. We went to the National Park Southwest, went to Zion, Bryce, Grand Staircase, um, Grand Tetons, Yellowstone. Well, about a week into the trip, we were driving up through Utah, and she saw billboards everywhere. Cove Fort, 80 miles. Cove Fort, 40 miles. Cove Fort, 22 miles. Cove Fort, next exit. She said, I want to stop and see this fort. I said, what are you talking about? I want to stop and see this fort. Okay. So we go just a mile up the interstate. This fort was built in 1861. It's the only one still in existence that ran from Salt Lake City, Utah to St. George, Utah. Every 35 miles, they built a fort for the people of Joseph Smith and the Mormons. The reason is because about every 35 miles is all the farther they could broadcast on telegraph system. 
those people would move back and forth from St. George, Utah to their home in Salt Lake City. And they all did their mission work up and down that corridor. This is the only fort still there, so we toured it. As we're touring this fort, we get a sweet lady named Sister Louise Crosby. And she's showing us the fort, telling us all about the wonders of the Mormon church. And I thought, okay, in about five minutes, they're gonna try to Mormonize my wife and I. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's okay. So, as we're taking a tour with just her and us, we go into the old blacksmith shop within the confines of the fort, and she says, why are you here? I thought, that's kind of a strange question. I said, well, my wife and I are on a trip and we saw the signs on the highway and we thought we'd stop. She goes, no, what brought you here? So I explained to her about my bucket list and that I'd been diagnosed with cancer, but I was doing pretty good. She took us to a little area, sat us down and she said, can we talk for a moment? Okay. She said, you've got lung cancer, yes. You're here because you're on a trip, a bucket list trip, yes. She grabbed her hands. This is the God moment. She said, I was just diagnosed with lung cancer Monday. I know why you're here. And at that moment, I knew why I'm here to do what I'm doing today. <clears throat> Debbie read something earlier, <clears throat> and I want to reiterate it. It is from Psalm 118. It's right there on the wall. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Well, as I was going through my trials and tribulations of cancer, and again, I started that treatment in February of 15, did 26 treatments. <clears throat> in February of 16, they randomly selected certain patients to go off treatment. I got randomly selected to go off treatment. I was scared to death because my scans at the time were showing no cancer. I thought, well, if it's working, why are you taking me off treatment? Well, that's just the way clinical trials work. <clears throat> I stand here today having not had a treatment since February 2016, and last month, after scans every month for the last five years, I was told last month that you are free of cancer and cured. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so this is the day the Lord has made. As I was going through my journey, scriptures have helped tremendously. Psalm 55, I want to read this to you, and I want you to pay particular attention. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. From Psalm 30.
oh Lord my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. As we're looking at all these things, we've been through trial and torment. In January of 2015, a month before I was starting my clinical trial, our older daughter and her family had all four of their children sit down every year and they would write goals for the year that they wanted to accomplish. Our oldest grandson, Grant, wrote 106 goals that year. That's just the way Grant was. Grant was born with brain tumors. We lost him in December of 2015. There's a place in Lafayette that is named after him. It's a house for kids with special needs. It's called Grant's House. That's my grandson. His 54th goal that he wrote that January before he died was thank God every day for my life. I wear it on my sleeve. I wear it in my heart. I miss him every day. But if we can be just a little bit like Grant and thank God every day for your life, what a wonderful world this would be. I mean, it's... I don't have all the answers. I don't profess to have all the answers. But I did two things. I believed in my doctors. I totally believed in my family support, my friends, my church family support, and my faith. Bob Proctor wrote a book years ago called You Were Born Rich. He also was a very close friend to Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. My wife and I were fortunate enough a few years ago to go through a six-month no, I'm sorry, two-year seminar with those guys once every other month, and they would all come and speak to us in Indianapolis. The last thing that Bob Proctor said, and I'll leave you with this, he said, when you're faced with trials and tribulations, when you're faced with uncertainty, when you're faced with things that you don't think you can get through, four words, let go, let God, let go, let God. Thank you.